You know, diseases with a toxic connection, there are, there are so many diseases. In fact, I cannot think of one disease without a toxic connection. But let me give you a little bit of a guiding principle on this. Usually the systems of the body that are most sensitive are the immune system, which is often connected to the gut because the gut harbors about 60 to 70% of your immune function. Reproductive health, so a lot of infertility and PCOS. There was a study on B BPA levels and PCOS that I can recall. Uh, then we also have the neurological system, tremors, headaches, uh, any kind of mitochondrial distress or energy fatigue issues. So neurological, uh, reproductive, and also the immune system. Those are the three that I think of. But then I also can see that uh, other diseases, other conditions are also connected. So think big and broad when it comes to toxicity, for sure. But those are some of the common ones. And in fact, you know, uh, I was even thinking about how some of the conditions that we have these days, we didn't really talk about these things in the 1990s. Things like multiple chemical sensitivity, MCS, chronic fatigue, this has become an epidemic. Or what about fibromyalgia? You know, all of these things is what I think of when I think of those, those toxins, when we have patients that have much like that glass of water taken on so much, so much stress, so much in the way of environmental offenders that they can't help but pour out symptoms related to pain, um, fatigue and, and all kinds of um, dysfunction at various levels of the body. So I would challenge you to come up with one disease or condition that doesn't have a toxic connection. Even something congenital from birth may also have a toxic connection, whether it could be from uh, a defect in our detoxification process of methylation or, or otherwise. So my message here is, is to think very big and broad.